Hi, I'm Lucy McDonald, physiotherapist, and today I'm going to talk to you about running shoes. So, how do you know what type of shoe is going to work for you? How do you know when you're supposed to change your shoes? How many pairs should you have throughout your marathon training? Um, all these really common questions that I'm asked um, all the time. So, first things first, um, what type of shoe? Now, for the vast majority of uh, runners, uh, a neutral shoe is going to be what you need. This is a neutral shoe. There are many, many different brands on the market. You don't have to go for the most expensive one. A decent running brand um, is advisable, but not entirely essential. And uh, you can get some um, good bargains and things online. However, you absolutely should be trying on shoes before you purchase them. So um, the most important, and this is the first thing, the most important thing about a running shoe is that it should be comfortable, which sounds really obvious, but we can get really het up with all the different um, biomechanical things about running shoes, but ultimately the shoe needs to be comfortable. And that's because if you've got a really comfortable shoe, you're more likely to get feedback from your foot or more a connection between your foot and your brain. So something called we call proprioception, which is your body's positional sense. Um, and it is one of the biggest indicators for injury. So if you've got lovely, comfortable shoes that fit you really well, then that's gonna help your proprioception and therefore reduce your chances of injury. So as I say, most people suit a neutral running shoe, um, not an anti-pronation shoe, or on the other end of the spectrum, a shoe with zero support, like a, a barefoot running shoes. For some people, those shoes are appropriate. For example, um, if you're a, a bigger, heavier runner and you do have excessive, truly have excessive um, overpronation, then an anti-pronation shoe is for you. Um, but they are vastly overprescribed. So if you have been told you need an anti-pronation shoe, can you get in touch with me and I'll just check a few things um, with you first. The other end of the spectrum is um, a shoe with no support, which is like a, a barefoot running shoe. And if you're already running in barefoot running shoes and you're finding them really comfortable, then that's fantastic news. Generally, they're better for higher level um, runners. So again, if you're thinking of transitioning into those shoes, then please, please get in touch with me before you do. And as I say, transition is the key, is, is to slowly reduce the amount of support that your shoes are providing, not to suddenly go from a, a normal neutral running shoe straight into um, barefoot running. That does work for some people. Some people in those situations write books and uh, go crazy on social media, but for a lot of people, that can actually cause injury. So just be a little bit careful if you're thinking of doing that. Right, so back to your nice neutral shoe. Um, doesn't need to be this particular brand, as I say. Um, what you're gonna look at is a few of the key components to a decent running shoe. And you'll notice that they all have a bit of a heel raise. Um, and that's very helpful uh, to aid your running biomechanics. And also, they have more support in the middle of the foot than they do at the front. So you can see that it kind of ramps down into a, um, just sort of where your big toe is. And what that means is that when you put pressure, I'm going to put pressure through the back and the front of the shoe, it should bend over your big toe joint. And that is a sign of a nice, healthy shoe. So if you want to work out whether you need to change your shoes or not, that is a really nice test, um, presuming that they're not stability or... Um, anti-pronation shoes but for a neutral shoe that is a really nice test so it should flex right over your big toe and then if I continue to push it will flex further up the foot as well so um, you will find that on average you will need at least two pairs of running trainers and it is really good to try and get your running trainers uh, two pairs of running trainers right at the beginning of your training so that then you um, you alternate shoes throughout the training. You certainly don't want to be waiting until two weeks before the marathon and getting a new pair of shoes for the obvious fact that when you have a new pair of shoes you're more predisposed to um, blisters and things like that. Um, so two, uh, two pairs of shoes throughout the whole marathon at least. If you're doing a lot of training in mud, water and particularly if you're training um, uh, by the sea so if your shoes are exposed to um, salt water, then you're really gonna need more pairs. 
uh, than that. But I hope that is helpful. By all means, do get in touch if you uh, would like further information. The best way to contact me is by email lucymacdonaldphysio at hotmail.co.uk or securely lucy at octopusconnect.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram uh, and uh, YouTube and I would love to hear your, uh, what you'd like me to um, talk about next. So please do get in touch. Uh, and in the meantime, happy running.